fellow student today we will discuss about the chou chou is a very important traditional theater form in our indian performing art scenario the history of the region of chou is mainly bengal bihar odisha and assam its association with the other streams of indian culture is difficult to reconstruct but there are certain landmark which is significant and must be mentioned some historian believe and note that the jain tirthankar mahavir preached in the region in the 5th and 5th century bc buddhism and hinduism were also known to the area between 2nd century ad and 12th century ad vaishnavism also left its impact in the post 15th century and more specially in the 17th century ad it is likely that chou of purulia came into existence as a result of the interactions between earlier culture and the advent of vaishnavism is that on in contained the story of the epic were adopted the form of singing of the epic were adopted the form of singing continued to be the jhumur a melody used of a ritual singing of the tribal and the ritual rural community this is a typical cultural pattern in the village culture while the form has remained old new content has been installed into it among the traditional theaters of india chou of purulia is known to have been derived from the war dance of kurmi tribe of purulia the kurmi community other aboriginal and semi aboriginal people who homeland is purulia province of west bengal still believe that they were war dancers from this war dance the present form of chou has developed and accordingly it is named chou judh as well the history of the development of purulia chou makes it evident that the tribal dance was gradually transformed into a traditional dance it took a long time as a lot of contribution was made by tribal and folk artist finally the patronage of the king of bagmundi of purulia saved the form in the 17th century the royal family embraced hinduism they constructed temples and introduced the festival of goddess durga the dance become an essential part of the festival naturally they initiated dance themes at the festival from the stories of ramayana the dance once upon a time was war dance and mainly based on the tala now it become necessary to be based on the obhinaya of the story of indian epic and other pauradic literatures the features characteristics and purpose were changed it may be noted that according to bharat natya shastra the chou is initial stage was based on rith but with introduction of themes it included rith finally traditional chou dance 
followed the path of mainstream evolution of Indian traditional and classical dances. This dance concept from Purulia spread to neighboring areas like Moorbhanj, Siraikella, where its development followed their own course. The tribal communities who are related to the Chou dance are engaged in agriculture and forestry. They believe the nature as they are gods like the sun, the earth, the forest and the water. In addition to this, Durga, Vishnu, Kartikeya and Ganesha are also worshipped by them. The rituals and festival are held on almost every month. They have their different rituals and festivals of different purpose. During drought season, at the time of harvesting, they perform certain rituals to get rain and prosperity. In addition to these, some rituals are held for the safety and security from natural calamities. And one of the major festival in Purulia is Sun Festival, which is held in the month of April. It is also called Shib Gajon Festival. The Chou dance of Purulia is greatly associated to the above festival and the festival is also popularly known as Chou festival. God called Mararang Buru and Marang Bonga are worship in the sun festival as a major god. This festival is held at the Kohoria temple that is Durga temple situated at the lonely place surrounded by the hills and forest. Festival starts in the evening and continues till the following morning on 13th April. The large number of devotees participates in this festival. The villagers refrain themselves from food for a day prior to the day of the New Year festival. It is customary for all the villages to decide the day to the deities they will dedicate. Rites and ceremonies are held in the respect of sun god, Shiva and local deities. The connection of goddess Durga is a special feature of this festival. In the day of festival, large crowds gather to celebrate the festival and they can be seen participating in the proceeding with great devotion and enthusiasm. When the festival come to a close at the one, they take bath in the reservoir. Thus the show performance takes the form of an essential event in a social festival. The community like Bhumiji, Mura, Kurmi and Dom had greatly contributed to the development of Cho. The role of Bhumiji people is to organize Cho theatre groups and arrange the necessary training for the participant. Bhumiji people enjoy a higher social status than the other tribal communities and they render knowledge of dance and singing to the others. It can be seen that Bhumiji community has contributed immensely for the uplift of the Chou theatre 
even today. Another tribal community is Mura of Mun of Munda. Mura is the priest of the village god. Mura worship Singh Bonga, the sun god. Both Mura and Bhumiji communities worship sun god. But the name of sun god for Mura tribes is Singh Bonga and for Bhumiji tribes is Dharan. The Ostad or trainers in Purulia Chow come mainly from Mura community. They are dedicated, participate, dedicated in Chow dance. They decide they dedicated participant in Chow dance as a trainer. They have been participating and training for more than last five generation. Kartik Singh Munda is one of the Chow master or Chow Ostad in such generation and he is a Chow manager in the village Chorida in Bagmundi, Purulia district. The community called Dome has made its own contribution to the Chow dance of Purulia. Their input is mainly as musician, war drums of large size such as Nakara or Dhamsa which were used during war become the percussion instruments in the Chow dance also. Now my students, I will discuss you about the presentational aspects of Chow of Purulia. Chow is generally performed at night. It usually begins after 10 at night and continues throughout the night. It is performed on the bare ground or open area. Purulia Chow Arena is a raised floor circular in shape. Sometime a natural location is selected to prepare arena for the purpose. The arena is so arranged that all the spectators can watch the performance well. The Purulia Cho arena is open on all sides. The actor, once he enters the passage, can well seen by all the spectators. On one side of the arena, the chorus and the orchestra are set on the floor. Generally, the group consists about 10 artists including one or two Nakara players and two Dhol players in the beginning of Purulia Cho performance the, performance, the music. The musician present a concert to display their skill and settle the audience to witness the forthcoming performance. Here, the two drummer present dance moment without rhythm and performs on all sides reaching the maximum number of audience. After this presentation, the singer starts presenting an evocation by singing in honor of God Ganesha. After that, the drummers begin to beat the drums loudly. Immediately, an actor appears at the end of the corridor. He wears a mask of Ganesha and a pair of wooden arms were represent God Ganesh. He comes to the acting area and begin to dance in a fast tempo. After some time, a few more characters enter the arena. Suddenly, the scene comes to a climax. At this moment, the musician of the orchestra 
increase the sound of their voice and instruments encouraging the actors at this time so sometime the spectator also sought sought to encourage the actors after the commencement of the dance by ganesha kartika parvati and shiva to join on the stage and start dancing finally their group dance marks the conclusion of the episode presentation of a few solo dance item after ganesh dance are a special feature of purulia chhau tradition the dramatization of a story is enacted after that episode the ramayana may be cited as an example the entire story is divided in performing scenes or episode the great scholar sri ashutosh bhattacharji in his book on purulia chhau narrated that ramayan is divided into the following scenes first scene killing of the young lad sindhu by the king dasaratha second scene meeting the blind saint and his blind wife with the body of their son sindhu with dasaratha third scene sacrificial rituals called protestin performed for a son being born to king dasarath performed by vaisya and vishamitra vasishta and vishamitra they were present three sequins three queens receiving the sacrificial food that is called chadu fourth scene the ceremonial pulang of land by the king janak and the birth of sita at a through made by his plow log fifth scene group dance for young son of king dasaratha at ajodhya sixth scene vishamitra appears before the dasarath and beg of him to offer rama and lakshmana seven scene killing of demon taroka by ram and lakshmana in presence of vishamitra eight scene court of the king janak of mithila breaking the bow of shiva by ram and the marriage of sita with him ninth scene parashuram fights with rama on the later ways to ajodhya with sita tenth scene rama goes to exile with sita and lakshmana 11th scene rama at chitrakoot his meeting with bharat and letters an acceptance of the wooden sandals of rama 12th scene friendship of guhaka the hunter with rama 13th scene at panchavati super surpo nakha appears and tries to allure fastly ram and then lakshman who cuts her nose 14th scene at panchavati the golden deer appears ram and subsequently lakshman follow it ravan in the guise of an ecstatic abstra abducts sita 15th scene rama and lakshmana enter into empty cottage they laminate and search for sita 16th scene rama meets sugriva and makes friendship with him he met also hanuman 17th scene rama meets sugriva and bali killing of bali 18th scene hanuman meets sita confined at ashoka forest of lanka 
Hunuman offered the ring of Ram to Sita. Nineteen sin, Hunuman captured by Rakhaso, brought before Ramana, frees himself and burns Lanka with the fire of his tail. Twentieth sin, battle in Lanka between the Rakhaso and monkeys. Twelve sin, killing of Taroni Sen and Kumbhakarno. Twenty-two sin, second sin, twenty-second sin, killing of Mahiravana. Twenty-third sin, killing of Meghnath by Lakhon, helped by Vibhishan. Twenty-fourth sin, throwing the, of the spear named Saki by Ravana and killing. Twenty-fifth sin, Lakhon brought back to life with the help of Hunuman. Twenty-sixth sin, death arrow of Ravana stolen by Hunuman from the custody of Mandadhuri. Twenty-seventh sin, killing of Ravana by Ram. Twenty-eighth sin, fire ordeal of Sita. Twenty-ninth sin, return to Ajodha. Thirtieth sin, Rama occupy the thrones of Ajodha with Sita. In between the above scenes, sometime some popular comic relief are introduced. They are irrespective of the episode of Ramayana. Now, I like to tell you, my students, the characters of Purulia Chau. The characters, when appearing on the stage, is introduced by the main singer in Purulia Chau. The singer also presents the dialogue between the characters. The actor are only to do the physical acting on the stage without uttering the dialogues. At present, we find the following classification in Purulia Chau according to the story they have incorporated their repertory. One is human character. Number two is animal characters. Number three is divine characters. Number four is demonic character. One of the more strikingly feature of Purulia Cho is the mask, which are owned by all dancers. The high quality of workmanship of this mask speaks well for the village craftsmen who continue to play their trade in Charida village. About 40 families consider this their hereditary trade. Since this is a family business, women and children assist the male members at different stages in the process. Each mask is carefully wrought of paper molded on a clay form. All are painted in vivid co colors and patterns to symbolize the rank and temperament of the characters. In general, the range of colors used to symbolize character types inconsistent with that used in other forms of traditional Indian theater. Mask of hero and heroines are white with delicate design of blues and green paint along the jawline and on the forehead. Somewhat in the same manner, as the elaborate makeup design appeal to the faces of young actors who portray Rama, Lakhana in Ramlila or in Krishna in Raslila. As understood, masks are recent addition to the makeup of Purulia Chow, the artist used to put watery clay 
and then liquid colors made from mixtures of leaves and barks of trees. Later, light bamboo mask started being used for the characters. Many are of opinion that the use of mask in Purulia Chow has been adopted from the Gajan festival. The deities of Gajan are Shiva and Ganesha. The devotees and participants sing, dance and praise the deities. The use of mask makes the characters like animal and deities identifiable easily and hence the audience understand the enactment of the story better. Later on, when Chou dance became a part of their religious festival, the task of making mask are entrusted to the craftsmen. The following step have been followed for making the mask in this tradition. Rough mold of the mask made with clay by hand. This process is known as matigara. Putting the ashes or call chai makano. Then the piece of paper are pasted with gum made which is made with wheat flour is known as kago chitkano. A layer of clay is painted over the mask after the paper is dried. This known as kabili jepa, kabi lepa, pasting of pieces of light cloth with sticky clay is called kapor setano, polishing the whole mask that is eye, nose, teeth, chin, lips by a very delicate wooden chisel known as thapai, the limbs of face eye, ear, nose, chin, cheek are sharpened by a sharp pointed wooden instrument. This process is known as khusni khuchana, khucha, khusni khucha, painting of slip of the mask is also known as kabji lepona or painting by clay. Then the mask is removed from the model by a sharp and flat iron instrument known as khunti and dried in the sunshine. Putting the light weight clay on the mask is khori lepa, khori lepa. Coloring the mask according to the characters is wrong kora. Shedding the under eyes, upper eyes, beside the nose, cloth and powder colors are used for the said color. Drawing the lips and eyebrows after the mask has dried. Gorgon oil and varnish are used for the signing. Then rubbing the mask by a piece of white cloth. After the above steps, mask need to be colored according to nature and status of the character. For example, Rama and Arjuna are green, Krishna is blue, Shiva is white, Kali is black, demons are green or red. 
After the masks are ready, the steps are to be followed are called Shaja No or making the ornaments and dressing the headdress. For this purpose, craftsmen use the colorful and shining material like sticks, bird's feather, aluminum foil, putti, leaves of jamir pata, chumki, salma, motor kati, kiran, fakri, jasmine, plastic leaf, flowers and jute etc. After finishing the above work, they start to add wigs, beard and other thing which are needed to portray the characters. Students, now I like to discuss before you in detail about the different mask of different group of characters such as mask of divine characters, the portraying of the characters of God like Shiva, Ganesha, Kartika, Ganesha Dur and du Goddess Durga through mask and other physical feature are carried according to Hindu belief. The color of those masks are according to the Hindu faith. The faces are given a light yellow color. Mask of Shiva has the gobra hoods fitted on the head in traditional manner with dropping eyelids and the third eye on the forehead. According to the tradition, the god of Ganesha has elephant head on it and round eyes. The mask of goddess Durga had a long set of eyes and the third eye on the forehead. In addition to the above, there are many other features associated with their individual characteristics. Even the headdress has special attachment such as Durga Devi, Billa Patra, the symbol of the soul, for Kartika, peacock feather, the painting on the mask of Ganesha and Kartika in silver color while Shiva's in luminous color. Now I will discuss about the mask of demonic character. The Mahishasur, the Raktasur and most popular among the demonic character. The mask of the demonic character are made to reflect their characteristic features and immediate habits. Craftsmen of Purulia are very talented to portray all these in their mask made for those characters. Dark in colors like black, dark blue are used for demon character. The eyes are round in shape and bulging out large open nostril, thick beard and eyebrow, the mouth with big teeth give this face a ugly and very unlike look. Now I like to tell you about the mask of human characters. Mask representing social characters like officials, administrative people, characters from British time and many other are made for performance by the mask, mask maker of the Purulia. Now the important mask is animal character. Purulia Chou gives an important place 
to birds and animal characters. Among them some are lion, bull, gorilla, crocodiles, cobra and water reptile such as frogs, tortoises is seen on the stage. The actors are very much skillful to imitate the movement and behavior of animal and birds. But craftsmen can be credited with the making the mask of such birds and animals. The art of making mask have become an icon of Bengal. Mask are now made for commercial selling to art connoisseurs. But increasing demand is hampering the quality of mask. Craftsmen are using artificial and plastic material to decorate those marks. The mask instead of the natural feather, leaves, salma and other decorative material. So the look of originality is vanishing fast. On the whole, the mask of Purulia Chou can be taken as a separate can craftsmanship independent from the performance. Thank you.